You know, in that portion which we read, Psalm 32, you will find in the eighth verse these wonderful words. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide you with mine eye. So, the ninth verse says, So, be you not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall come past him about. I will instruct. You know, folks, the top man in education was called Director of Public Instruction. Now, that was the designation which the British gave to their top educator. They said, the nation needs instruction. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide you with mine eye. And now, friends, the old dollar note or bill had these words. There is in the treasury of the United States silver equivalent of backing this dollar bill. The present Bill says, this is legal tender. That's all. So, the standards, the gold standard, has gone. The security that seems to come with gold has gone. In other words, America, which has no business to be a debtor to any other nation, has become the biggest debtor nation. Can you imagine? I never put myself in a position where I owed anything to any man. I thought it would be terrible to be counting up my pennies and saying, Hey, when am I, when is the creditor going to appear at the door? Is Joshua in? He owes me a sum of so much. He has been defaulting. 
hard words. Nobody likes to hear those words. But God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. Now, folks, the battle of faith is something which we don't necessarily invite. It can sometimes be very tough. No relief, no silver lining to the clouds, nothing but gloom, and you have only the promise of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Only the promise of God. So, the question will be, will you look at the circumstances, the prevailing wind and weather, or will you look at the reality of the promises the security which is in God himself. Isn't that almost an elementary test in a sense? You know, we all say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. My dear friend, are these just words that we have mouthed? Or are they real? You know, one of the basic teachings of Hinduism is, and Buddhism, the material world is not real. That's the basic teaching. The material world is not real. So it's all an illusion. Now, as someone said, science could never have been born in Buddhism or in Hinduism. Because they say this is not real. They have a word called Maya, a Sanskrit term which says vanity. It's all vanity. It's not real. So, friends, but when we come to the Christian gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, you and I are called in following Jesus to be overcomers. Overcomers. You know, folks, in my own life, 
the worst battles were my inward battles. It was not circumstances. It was not enemies. It was not somebody outside. My, there was a big battle with my own nature. My nature appeared to be an awful obstacle, a negative factor. And uh, the cross held hope to me that my evil nature was crucified through Jesus' death upon the cross. So I will cling to the old rugged cross is not just the theme of a song. It was a very real thing to me. I had to go to the cross because that was the only hope of deliverance from Joshua Daniel, from my old nature. So there, there was a terrific battle. And the Bible tells us, if you turn to the first chapter of First Corinthians and verse 30, but of him or you in Christ Jesus. First Corinthians, first chapter, verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that's what we have in Christ. You know, we think of the wisdom of the world today. The wisdom of the world is failing. The very word atom means that which cannot be divided. The very word atom in its Greek origins means it's indivisible. But what do we know today? Oh no! The atom is divisible. So its very name, atom, is contradicted. So science changes. There are many changes that come in science. But God's word never changes. It's truth, you see. How can truth change? Truth can't be this A and tomorrow it becomes B and next day it becomes C and the other and the next day it becomes what you think it is. You see, playing with truth, nobody can do that. No nation can do that. The founders of this nation took the Bible and they placed the Bible and the wisdom of God's Word in the highest place. That, in fact, accounts for the greatness of this nation. 
But as soon as the Bible was set aside, truth cannot be eliminated. That's all it is. Truth cannot be altered by my whim or fancy. And therefore, when I decide to say truth is not truth, then I'm going to bang my head against the wall and have a fractured skull. And that's exactly what the nation is doing today. You know, somebody should have had the courage to say, even the inaugural speech of the president, which said America is a nation of, you know, Christians, Buddhists, or whatever, Now, actually, he was in contempt of court because the Supreme Court had already decreed after careful investigation of all the documents, this is a Christian nation. All right, that is history. The origins of this nation are very clear. People did not come to America to have what they felt were gala time with money all rolling at their feet. No, they had to work for every bit of it. They had to endure many privations. But they loved truth. They did not want any government to interfere with their worship of the God of truth. My dear friends, that is how firm the origins of this country are. Now, if you begin to shake the foundations of any building, what happens? Someone is building very close to our, the headquarters which is four, five, six floors high. Someone is building a car park very close by with two levels underground, which means there will be heavy pile foundations and ramming and deep digging and vibrations. As I pointed out, they could crack the walls of the huge church building. hardly 20 yards away. That could happen. Now, when you touch the foundations, you shake the whole building. And that is what we are too doing today. Shaking the foundations. But let us get back to what God says. If you turn to Psalm 73 
and verse 24, you will notice from the 23rd and 24th verses. Now to get the background of this, 22nd verse 2. So foolish was I, Psalm 73, and verse 22. So foolish was I and ignorant, I was as a beast before you. Yes, indeed. Sometimes our ignorance and grossness can make us so insensitive. We become stubborn. And hard, I was as a beast before you. You know, it's a beastly thing, is it not, to invoke the name of God and murder? Is it a rational thing? Can it ever be called a religious? Action? You know, friends, it is a sad day when man does not re realize that without Jesus Christ you get beastly. I was as a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. You see, my dear friends, I find it hard to describe what I have seen through my life. What have I seen? I have seen the guiding hand of God, the unerring hand of God. And for me to say, hey, I did it, I am a pretty wise fellow, I have a brilliant brain, would be a bunch of nonsense. It would be untruthful. But today, we imagine that our wisdom is far superior to the wisdom of God. If we had an atom of true humility, we would say, guide me with your counsel. You take over the steering. You guide me. My dear friends, when we are talking about guidance and the guiding hand of God, God guides us never against his holy word. He guides us according to his truth. Thy word is truth. So, God's word is never dismissed as same as being culturally irrelevant today. You know, we like to feel that our culture is somewhat superior to the wisdom of God. And so we find the word of God to be incompatible with our culture today which is a bunch of total arrogance. 
absolute arrogance. It's not at all that a humble attitude at all. So, Thou shalt guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. So there is the guiding hand of God in the destinies of those that trust him. Don't take away that hand. Don't say, hey, everything has gotten berserk now, and so everything is higgledy-piggledy in my life, and now I don't know what I am to do. No. Let's go to the Word of God. The Word of God says, I have a way in the wilderness for you. You see, friends, I wonder what kind of car you drive, but whatever car you drive, suppose you come to a place where the road ends and there's simply no road ahead. What do you do? Do you think that your car will serve you at all? No, but the Lord says, I guided you through the wilderness where there was no way, no road, no footpath, nothing. I have guided you. Now, if you turn to Proverbs, the second chapter, there is a warning here. There's a warning taken from the context of a wayward woman. And the second chapter of Proverbs, 17th verse, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. So, there is the forsaking of the guide of her youth and the forgetting of the covenant of her God. Now, you will see that such a state makes her path unto the dead, her house inclineth unto death, and her path unto the dead. Jeremiah 3, 4 says, Jeremiah 3, 4 says, Will thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Thou refusest to be ashamed. You know, there are some people who are very unwilling to say, I am sorry. I am wrong. Please pardon me. What? I don't find it hard at all to say I'm sorry. In fact, I also say I'm an ignoramus. <laughs> In, indeed, I am. In many fields, I'm an ignoramus. So I can say, hey, Please tell me, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. You see, where is the difficulty to say, 
Will thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth. I am not going to forsake you. I need your guidance. I need you to lead me. You know, my dear friends, I was going to talk to a very big businessman in Delhi. And so that was an appointment. I was going through Delhi, still further north, towards Pakistan. And uh, so as I walked into his stately office, I did not notice a step. I missed a step and went sprawling. Very dignified entry, I would say. However, I didn't get hurt. That was the great mercy of God. You see, when you go sprawling, can't you pick yourself up and say, hey, I missed a step. I was foolish. I was hasty. You think that requires a great deal of humility? Of course, when I went on my back and my feet flew up, I did look very dignified, of course. My dear people, can't we say, I missed a step, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Now that is sad. You know, my dear friends, I believe in the highest office. If a man can say, I'm sorry, My vanity misled me. My bullheadedness misled me. Oh, that would be wonderful if we had leaders like that. But, you know, we find it so difficult to say I'm sorry. If you turn to Psalm 78, here we see in the 52nd verse, Psalm 78. You know, as we study God's word about his leading hand, 52nd verse, but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. Just think of that. Taking care of three million people day in and day out just as they were, you know, we are not able to take care of them in our cities with all the infrastructure. We say the sewage is getting mixed up with the drinking water. Or we say the roads are all pitted. Or we say something is out of order. You know, but the Lord led them and guided them in the wilderness like flock. And 72, verse 72. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Now, my dear friends, you know, 
ev a mercedes mechan master mechanic was driving me one day through switzerland and we were just about to go into Italy. And this man was going closer and closer to the edge of the road. Well, you know, knowing that he was a master mechanic of Mercedes-Benz, I dare not direct him about how to drive a Mercedes. He hit a bridge. On my side of the car, the whole side was ripped off and became just a clump of metal. The whole side, my door disappeared. I had just been leaning on my door, trying to snatch a little sleep. Just about that time, I think, I righted myself. Bang! An iron bridge tore the metal away, the whole front section. I was literally unscathed. Just a little skin, you know, cut or in my shin. But apart from that, there was nothing there to complain about. Well, he was, I was in very skillful hands, wouldn't you say? Master mechanic of Mercedes-Benz headquarters. I was in very skillful hands. But the skillfulness of man's hands are never going to be better than the skillfulness of the nail-pierced hands. In whose hands are we? Which are the hands that are guiding us today? I will, and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. I will guide you into all truth, says God. Let us be willing. Let us not be as the mule without understanding. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that we can trust those nail-scarred hands and the skillfulness of those wonderful hands out of which no man can pluck us. So as we see the ebb and tide of history and of man's folly and disobedience. Lord, we cry to you. We would rather fall into those hands, those perfect hands of Jesus than fall into any safety net 
which the governments of men can contrive for us. We want to be led by those wonderful hands. And grant also that the nation might know that there are no better hands that can hold the steering than the hands of our wonderful Savior. So, Lord, we pray that thou wilt guide us by your hands and by your counsel. And let us be patient while you are working and doing that perfect work. We ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen.